perhaps it's a, a bit of a side fun tangent, but Matt Matthew Johnson brings up DMT and the experience of DMT as a as a as from a scientific perspective, just a just a mystery in itself uh, over its intensity of what happens to the brain. And of course, Joe uh, Rogan and others bring it up as a very different special kind of experience. Uh, the, and elves seem to come up often. <laughs> I've never tried DMT. What allows for hallucinogenic states? Yes. And it, I mean, DMT is a really interesting molecule. There, there are a lot of people experimenting now with um, DMT, um, and they just the way they've described it is as a kind of a freight train through space and time. Very different than the way people describe LSD type experiences or psilocybin, where time and space are very fluid, but it tends to be a kind of a slower roll, if you will. Um, so it's clear that DMT is tapping into a brain state that's distinctly different than the other psychedelics. And, and you mentioned jujitsu and these other communities. I mean, it's, I think it's interesting because jujitsu is a nonverbal activity and people get together and talk about this nonverbal activity and they show great love for it in the same way that surfers, you know, I've known some surfers in my time and they will get up at the crack of dawn and drive really, really far to sit in the water and wait for this wave to come. I have to imagine it's pretty fantastic. I think that human beings now, some of whom are in the scientific community are starting to feel comfortable enough to talk about some of these other loves and other endeavors because they do reveal a certain component about our underlying neurology. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by um, the concept of wordlessness, activities in which language is just not sufficient to capture and in which feel so vital as a reset, as important as sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's one of the dangers of the phone is not that you're going to get into some online battle or that you're always staring at the phone is that it's a word. So as we read things, we're hearing the script in our head. Mm -hmm. And I think getting into states where we are in a state of wordlessness is, is very renewing and replenishing and just can feel amazing. For, and I believe also can help us tap into creative states and allow our neurology to access creative states. And sleep is one such wordlessness period. So one of the most interesting things to me are states that one can approach in waking, non-sleep deep rest, wordlessness through, maybe it's jujitsu, maybe it's for some people surfing, maybe it's dancing, maybe it's just, I don't know, staring at a wall, who knows. But where the language components of the brain are completely shut down. And it has to be the case that drugs are no drugs, that the brain is entering and starting to states and starting to use algorithms that are distinctly different than when we're trying to compose things in any kind of coherent way for someone else to understand. There's no interest in anyone else understanding what you're experiencing in that moment. And that's beautiful. And I think, uh, I think it's not just beautiful because it feels good. I think it's beautiful because it's important and it's clearly fundamental to our neurology. And it, your sense is there's a connection between dreams and DMT and like psychedelic, like all of the, uh, you can you can understand one by studying the other. So for example, dreams are also very difficult to study, right? But they're more accessible. It's yeah. safer to study. And we're so, told we need to get more of it. Whereas with psychedelics, there's this big question mark. Is it going to make everyone crazy? Is it is it going to be legal? I mean, it's kind of interesting how if, if one looks on Instagram, one could almost think that these drugs are already legal based yes. on the way that people commute, but they're not yet. They're yes. still, a lot of them are scheduled. And there's a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, and but nevertheless, it's like, uh, my, my hope is that uh, science opens up to these, uh, drugs a little bit more. It's just, I have this intuition that like a lot of people share that they would be able to uh, unlock deeper understanding of our own mind. It's it's any kind of, same as studying dreams. Absolutely. Right?